still expect him on XN's lock in here as well. Unless they want to go for mid jungle blind, it would be a little bit audacious. But Quay is such a multi faceted uh, mid laner that I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that is the case. It is going to be the smolder in the end. So, Jake, we could be in for a slow one from TT's point oh, of view. Yeah. But what I do like about this is the confirmed lock in of scaling, right? You've got Hui, who eventually at two items will be a monster, and then Beige One lost their magic number. Is two two five or two twenty? I think it's two two five stacks. Hey, it's two two five. Uh, yeah, yeah. On for on the, the dragon patience, yeah, for the execute. And then once that comes through, TT, the scaling is going to be very, very scary. Now, what we need to really see from this point onwards is nullifying agents, right? Things that can really play around these two carries and keep them safe. Poppy would be, you know, the complete embodiment of that. Can fit in the jungle world for Beach One, or actually can be a very, very solid answer uh, into Jax in the top lane as well. So, a really, really good flex here. Uh, we'll see exactly where that puppy lands uh, once they go through this second ban phase. Yeah, because I wouldn't put it past Hoya to take puppy in the top lane. Uh, Hoya feels like, you know, that very distinguished, like, I'm going to pull out whatever I'm feeling kind of player. Um, from what we've seen, at least so far, that has definitely been the case. It's, We'll leave that up to chance because for now we get away some of those jungles, the poor fans. And more likely you're thinking for Monkey, maybe could go into the jungle alongside this Jax. Just remember as well though, we have seen a lot more Jax jungle into things like the Zin Zhao. So I guess we can kind of just wait and see um, what goes where from TD to see how ADG react with this very flexible pick. Exactly. I think uh, at the end of the day, like you mentioned, with Poppy's flexibility, it does give TT a lot of options, but also Jax can answer those options in both top and uh, jungle. Especially recently, I feel like one of the biggest kind of strengths about Jax at the minute is there's so much CC typically in lanes that adding the counter strike on top of that and then also being a very strong counter to uh, those all attacking base champions does make him even stronger as Skirmisher. There will be two very aggressive dive orientated uh, junglers being banned away here by TT. Monkey still has a couple of options left available. The least Sin is, of course, the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, but for now, it will be TT's pick the lit up, presumably on the support uh, slot. I think you just go towards the Maokai. It's up. It's available. There's no reason not to go for it. It will definitely be, you know, uh, potentially open to abuse, depending on what Vampire wants to go towards. Uh, but again, the other thing about this lock-in here for Maokai is it's still flexible, right? It can go up towards the, the jungle roll if needs be, and then Poppy can go top. Then you've got two frontliners and the opportunity to find, you know, a very strong counter pick in the support role, which would give you a lot of space then to allow some to scale. So TT in a very, very good spot. And EDG, they have to really, I think to me, go for a hard lock, right? There's the Viego. Do you even want more engage? Nautilus is gone, Rel is gone, Alistar's gone, Rakan is kind of the only thing up, but into Poppy Maokai? It's not going to feel like a fun that game to play. Hard, no? yeah, yeah, it's I mean, going to be a really rough game. I'm trying to think. Leona probably would have been your best bet. Uh, you know, yeah. very non-committal engage, but then it feels at times perhaps a little bit harder to follow up on that, and then you've got a lot of cleanse value then between, uh, you know, Varus, Ari as well, so it would have felt kind of hard. Okay. There's that Mount, uh, not the Mount guy, there's the Lee Sin that we uh, alluded to also. Uh, but it was in Monkey's hands before about that one going towards it. will be the Maokai support. Poppy top. Jungle will be Lee Sin. So to me, TT have all of the tools in the well to win this game once we tick over about 20 minutes, right? Two items, tw 225 stacks on one XM. The game should feel like theirs with the two frontliners and a lot of peel that they have. EDG, the onus is on them to either get Arla ahead so that he can win very heavy handedly on the side lane or very simply put TT so far behind that they never get to a point where the scaling lands. And I mean, get in range of TT as well. I think EDG is going to be a big challenge too. Like we look at this comp and we see, yeah, there's resetability once again. There's a lot of melee damage dealers though. There's a lot of abilities that need to get in range and need to position well. So onus is on EDG. It feels like following up to your point uh, when we see things like play and smaller, we know there's giga scaling there. And I think we've seen the most in the LCK so far. Like, I, I think we've, we've also seen it in LPL. But Smolder scales so damn well, as you'd expect. But just the one-shot capability, like, 
if you're a squishy and it's three four items smolder in a team fight you just get executed you get like two shots he sneezes on you he then throws something else out of his nose and then he calls for his mum. that dude is lethal and he's like a six-year-old dragon don't forget that he flaps around that's really cute he does flap around. that is cute yeah you're yeah. right you're uh, on the cutest uh, today. yeah you're on the cutest today it's good vibes positivity only for our return here and uh, TT would like some cute and positive vibes for the first 20 minutes of this game with no bloodshed so they get to scale <laughs> let's see if they can do that however or not EDG can push the envelope and you have to hope they really need to shut down the scaling uh, aspects here they've got some tools to do it let's see how they operate in this game number two one next thing, gonna take a heavy trade here, but it is early enough where he can just back away. There's not too much EDG can do unless another hail of arrows comes through from the snake. And to be fair, that is a possibility, but too many unknowns there with Chocho off to the wing, just spotting out EDG, backing away from the enemy jungle. And you know, in the last early game, uh, we did see, like, we saw some good picks from EDG. And I think Jamada will kind of hyped up on, it wasn't the bot lane play, was it? I'm trying to think. Uh, or was it everywhere else? Was it top lane dive versus Hoya? It was top lane dive. Yeah. Very yeah. likely for EDG. Because uh, bot lane sucked. There was no way they were getting any plays. <laughs> definitely like wasn't bot, true. Yeah. So uh, let's see what they can do. I mean, again, the thing, the only worry for me about TT is in some kind of weird way, they do lack a little bit of agency. A lot of the agency in the early game, I should probably caveat that by saying is uh, they're going to rely a lot on Beige One and his early damage to kind of get yep. themselves over the line. And I think very specifically him and Chocho are going to have to set up early doors. And that can also potentially allow Yu Cal to then, you know, fire things over the top. Very, very potent vampire and the snake. Trying to establish a little bit of dominance here. Works on the junglers though for a second. Even I know we are looking at a very extended look at this bottom side. Actually because they're trying to force number two super hard. Both junglers potentially could path away from the bottom side and I'll be kind of surprised, but after what happened top side of Hoya and Ala in game number one, I think if I'm EDG, I would really like to try and get this Jax ahead, even if he's in a bit of a tough counter matchup. Side lane will still be a very important thing to focus on later on in the game. So I think as well, we already know that Hoya's gonna have big impact in this game. Like, Poppy versus team, we already mentioned. It's going to be quite uh, abusive for EDG to run into. But if, as we see the interaction there, at least one partial one, if uh, we get that sideline ahead for EDG, then other ports are like, well, okay. Controlling sides is great, putting pressure on lane so you're not getting a team fighting poppy who uses numbers advantage. Or find it early like this, Jamato, I guess they are. Like, hey, let's hit top again. Yeah, I mean, it's clear what the intent is. I just don't think it's going to work. Speaking of intent... What's an issue, isn't flash. it? Well, they're so far up, they cleanse the way. The snake will flash out, but look, Beach One's there to match Vampire trying to cover, but a sonic wave at melee range. It's going to go to Vampire instead. The snake will still die. And first blood over to TT. Looks like Beach One got the number again. Yeah, I mean, again, Beach One is going to be the one who will get TT across that scaling finish line. So it's good that he is able to find a play very early doors onto the bottom side and it's actually arguably better that he gets the kill because he's going to want to be accelerated in a game like this so that things can actually get done now Hoya does eat a pretty meaty trade but the issue is Allah's out of mana he's also very low so the dive now surely is off the cards let's take a look at this replay I mean it's pretty simple right Maokai pressed W and then Beichon gets the run down whoa whoa guys yeah but again the snake and vampire are just so far up that the reality of the kill was just not likely. Beichuan, I guess, thought that the first order would kill him. Uh, that's why he takes the Q. Kind of extends that kill, but it's not the end of the world. Monkey, all the while, did take a couple of camps off the top side. Red buff, Krugs, but as a jungler, losing your first, you know, respawn. Oh, sorry. Losing your first, you know, cycle of camps, not the end of the world. It's about the second uh, respawn, right? The ones that will come up after your first clear, which really feel kind of bad as... Really nice charge into the wall by Hoya. And I mean, in Beichuan's case, one, he's probably never going to touch his crux for a very long time. And two, it sets them up to be the, the next respawn cycle anyway. So 
really not the worst in the world to lose. But Monkey, of course, individually will gain a small lead once he finishes up this clear and goes back and spends his goal. And he will also be on the right side of the map as well. If you want to talk about experience lead and like gold lead as well, let's not forget that grubs are one of the most important in the game for junglers individually too. People always talk about the lane pressure and what can, they can do as Hoya just smacking Arla. But as a counter strike comes through, trade kind of reciprocated. My point was, Jamada, that grubs give 150 EXP, I think, on the first one. Like, yeah, first, first, it's uh, it's, it's depreciating on the XP, but yeah, it's like 150. But it's I, first of every new something. cycle. Every yeah. new cycle. So, when you get to the second time around, which of course is the first cycle of, of Grubs, it's great that each jungler gets at least one. That's why Baytron coming up to the top side here now trying to do the same. Yeah, exactly. Baytron is too far behind, one to one, at the end of the day, and again. Rusty, oh, hello, bottom side. Plans. Good kick back, or at least the sneezing commences. Yeah. From 1xn, get some return damage, but he did have to burn his cleanse for that, so for some of them Yeah. Chocho doesn't panic. Doesn't immediately go onto Vampire. And maybe they kill Vampire, but the issue is it'll be a one for one and the snake would survive, right? Uh, this way, Chocho disengages the snake from the trade. Oh, sneezing again, looking Woof. for the kill. Flap your wings and fly away, 1xn. With his first kill on that 2v2. Ooh, it ain't looking too good for the virus this time. No, no it is not, and you know, not to put salt in the wound here, we're losing a Varus lane into Smolder. It's not really the best look. Not only idea. that, it's not is it not, not ideal, it's the fact that, you know, we've had one gank here from Beichuan, and besides that, it has been an isolated 2v2. I mean, Flash W, no cleanse, the snake just accepts his fate, plain and simple. And once more pressure starts to come down towards this bottom side, it only yeah. gets worse. Which one's probably gonna have to see this skull crab. Level six for monkey now as well. Definitely a notable advantage. And so Beachwan can get on top of some camps. Let me just say that like even though comps have changed, like TT TT's identity doesn't really do that. Because they're, they're again two games in a row now continue to attack bot, whether it is through jungle presence or through just individual 2v2-ness, as I'd like to call it. Like, 1xN and Chocho have been a, a pretty impressive duo, and, you know, even though the Snake and Vampire and you, like, we're not getting that same vibe, considering that TT have now consistently set up bot granted 10 CS behind, but, like, as you said, we expect the virus to have the priority in this lane to be much further ahead than maybe what we would have seen in 1xN's case last game. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, a lot of this does also have to do with just pretty solid play from Chocho, -Cho, right? Uh, initial gank setup plus just the initial uh, setup for this 2v2. Not to mention, you know, the one window where Vampire and the Snake did have potentially a window to get that 2v2 in, uh, to kill in. Chocho -Cho just disengaged the Snake. Again, didn't panic, didn't look onto Vampire. Uh, acknowledges that in a lane like this, going one for one, whilst, you know, any gold in Smolder's back pocket is nice. Keep Smolder in the lane to keep stacking and whatnot. Always feels a little bit better than going one for one in those kills. Certainly does. We come to what is going to be the next uh, next grub spawn up in top side in minute 30. Just keep stock about building items. We're not quite there for first items as you expect here at eight minutes of the game, but TT with a small golf lead. You can see significant things like the sheen coming out. <laughs> Actually, noticing a tear coming through as Chain of Corruption oh. not there. I know Sheens aren't that significant, but as uh, 1xN dodges away from Chain's Corruption, maybe we can talk about that because that's a key ulti that the Snake now has down for a bit and might influence this dive. Mum? Yeah, I mean, Mum clears the oh. wave and all of the dive is just a lot less, uh, a lot less lucrative looking. But it was a good window for EDG to try and abuse. Now there's a top side play potentially in the offing. Beachwan's walked over a ward though and he doesn't know it. Either way, Arla's gonna be 1v3, has to back up, Cho Cho. Oh, doing this again. Vampire tries to build distance under the turret almost. Bramble smash. We won't get the desired effect as 1xN is dealing with the wave. Yeah, exactly. Now, Arla will get access to this top wave. EDG, they have to kind of re-explore this top side and ensure Arla can farm safely. But again, that is kind of the power of the counter matchup and you can see as well CS Arla's falling behind slightly he's gonna catch a majority of that wave and be around 10 CS down a little bit less perhaps but 
Still Hoya doing a good job this time around of, you know, actively nullifying Arla uh, in the counter matchup. And even goes towards Mercs as Yukal. He's looking for a I combo. believe in Yukal at this point. Fisher is going to run away. Oh. What? What? Yukal flash. You didn't need it. But man, I that was... <laughs> that was out of nowhere. Where was that damage from? <laughs> what? No, I we need a, a replay. Immediately. I, I thought, oh man, that's fine. Look, he obviously got double stacks of passive, but passive doesn't do that much. Uh, that, that was not okay. Slightest. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. try and refocus up a bit here after whatever the hell that was. Uh, it's going to be a split again of 2 to 1 on Grubs. Is the replay? Yeah, I mean, let's... Okay, so he's got the tonic also propped up from Triple Top on Yukal. So I think that's okay. also an important hidden stat here, but... Yukal doesn't expected. even know he's gonna kill him! He, he said, I'm gonna finish this <laughs> up. Afterwards, he's like, oh, hang on a minute. That's crazy damage, though. I mean, that's just from the ult proc. That's... That, yeah. that was, and it's huge. I mean, it's a big kill as well, considering that the TT, like, both their small were in play and now set up in the game, too. Exactly. You know, that was so much damage. I thought that, like, maybe, just maybe. Oh, it should be a kill, but it could it's be a right. diamond extended. Yeah, maybe. Back it's definitely a very problematic trade. I'll just got to go back to base and tell the court. Like, I thought, like, maybe Hui, like, QW'd, right? The uh, electricity bolt with the XQ from the bottom, and I just missed it. Oh, oh well, that's just me. That's just annoying. Just back there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just mean, Hoya. But yeah, I thought that maybe I just, you know, I'm getting older. My eyes, maybe they just didn't don't work as well as they used to. I just missed that QW. Isn't the case. So that is happening. Too. Nice damage. Yeah. No, look, I, I feel like uh, while we didn't expect it, I mean, again, we've definitely seen it many times. Another play taken by Hoya in topside, by the way, while we're chatting away. It is still a 2k gold lead, and it's still TT's game, it feels like, Jamada again. When we talk about how the pace is going, for EDG, they've tried for a barrel of plays, but bot going wrong. You know, that, that play solo kill out of nowhere, like, it, it's not like we're talking about a great early game from EDG, because they are being suffocated of their limited options. Exactly. You know, not only are they being suffocated from their limited options, it just doesn't really feel like they're looking for anything. Diva, right? And, oh, another threat of potential dive. What do you know? Mom's here. There's the wave. Mom's cleared. into a dive. Vampire goes under turret. Monkey is here as well. I mean, 1XN just ah. used his mom as the snake was a two shot away, it felt like, but survives if only just the kill being chased by Chocho, -Cho, but Monkey will save his life. To dive. It'll work. It'll work in the yeah. end of the kill. Yeah, I was a little bit too uh, dismissive of that. I didn't quite realize how far away Chocho -Cho was. I'm not able to lock down anyone else. Uh, in assistance to help, but TT maybe still have a window to do this dragon eclipse first for stage one. So a lot of upfront first. Uh, Some the sky as well, likely still be the second item. Teeing up this dragon, Monkey and Fisher trying to see what they can do, but the snake vampire still very far away. So EDG will not have this dragon stacking in their favor, and again, it's just another bit of pressure up. Deviated from TT side. Multi again. Watch Fisher's health. Yeah, significant. The Severin Bolt comes through. There's no execution. And look, Jamata, bit of a fool's errand from EDG at least. Trying to steal any kind of neutral from Elise in. Always hard with the executing Q. Um, but, you know, TT pulling it away. Again, almost finding a kill off the back end as well. Uh, keeps the game even slower, right? Keeping the dragon in, in their core is making sure that EDG don't have this mountain soul as a potential win condition as the game goes on. Exactly. It's not an early stacking one for EDG. It really oh, yeah. feels bad. And TT again, just life. As uh, they are eyeing up potentially another bottom lane play, and I mean, I don't blame them. And TT does their job. That's to react. Whoa! How good is flat? Man, that, that ability is good. Giving an 80 carry, I mean, I that is mobility. Uh, Jake, mm. not to you know, actually use yeah, Are flat, you going to put... Flat. Yeah, I, I knew you were going to put a third one in. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> is two not enough for me to say flap, flap on a broadcast? 
surely. No, yeah, I'm literally no. set a chew. No. <laughs> I um, I'll be gearing up. One day I'll have a sneeze in hand. All right. Okay. One day I'll have a sneeze in hand and I'm just gonna hold on to it. it. I'm gonna try and hold on to it. Unfortunately, not. I don't need a sneeze at the moment. I should get some pepper. Ooh. That does actually work. And if you yep. tried that before, Herald goes down. TT's as well, by the way. Monkey with the potential steal, but nope, he's yeeted out of there. Great from Hoyer. Now that's definitely their Herald. Exactly. Beethoven's off. Just hop back on the wall. Child does connect though. Flash. Kick. Safeguards away. TT here to help them out, but Monkey though might get a lockdown onto UCAL. The answer no for the time. A good charm though from Fisher, but the AoE damage from UCAL has to be respected and. But TT, it's an objective. It's getting out, and this time without losing anyone again. Yeah, exactly. Feels good for uh, TT. They and EDG again. You know, second to the punch, but this time you definitely have to credit Hoya. Seeing out of Fog, those monkeys are just going to poke his head into the pit with the Herald in the back of it. Just knocks him away. Snake. We have a of pressure. So I can here on to send. Not quite. Vampire had ult, he's able to beeline for that dive, but he's not in the offing this time around. But he gets a massive chunk out of this tower. I'm sure he's gonna do um, the same on the next wave, we'll see. Heads up, uh, 125 stacks almost there for the small mode as well, so getting more of that AoE. Like, 1xN stacking up quite nicely, and here at 16 minutes in the game, this Essence Reaver Smolder, something we can talk about as fights come through, but Fisher, Charm not gonna connect. The Spirit Rush has been used, bought, fought, and now Fish is going to run onto a cooldown for it. At least for the meantime. So for EDG, I guess they can use things like that, Jamada, because Dragon's not up for a minute 45. Um, it's not like we're fighting for an objective. Fisher will have that up and again. And it just looks like EDG are continuously trying to find picks for gold, but then as they do, they lose advantage across other sides of the map like this, as Hoya also have the ulti. Uh, not going to be able to follow this through. Hoya just continuously trying to put pressure on the duck. Exactly. Knows that uh, drop. On the next wave, he gets to attack it, so not the worst to him. And if we kind of take stock of items, I think it's probably the uh, calmest time we'll have. Arla will likely have his tried force kind of soon. He's got a call from the nope. after. Okay. Yeah, I mean, understandable. Have a nice day. That's what Hoya says. Just back away. Uh, I am Chekens. You know, everyone across the board is basically first I am. Uh, Arlo will get there in a second. I'm not sure where Yukal is in terms of progress, right? But I can imagine he's going to be very close to that second I am. I'm not sure he's going to be able to complete it before uh, this dragon spawns up, unfortunately. But still will be a complete powerhouse as Fisher is here. Uh, uh, do the defensive work, but unfortunately, Grubs plus that. Final remaining cannon. Yukal on tier one. Arla. Page one does jump in. Yukal holds onto the ult. Spiraling despair, remember. Range quite large. This Patron is trying for the pick. It's Vampire now follows through. Fisher with the Spirit Rush plus Charm. Doesn't connect. Nature's Grabs buys time. Oh. Chocho into the thick of it. He's in five members, but is that a mistake? His TT is so spread out. A double kill already going down to the snake. And for EDG. I mean, they just took the pickings as they came through. One XM wasn't even there. As now we're fighting again. Hang on, TT. Fighting without the core carry nearby. They do damage. They can rely on you, Cal, but I guess trying to buy time away from the dragon, it somehow worked. I guess it does in the end. TT. Just a little bit too big for their boots. They <laughs> just have to wait a little bit longer. True. And they will be ready to take fights like those. Again, you know, great teleport, very deep angle. It really does corner off TT. And then again, H1, Cho Cho, a bit too far forward. Flash Charm, swing and a miss, but Cho Cho goes in. Also, kind of just, I don't know, believing Hoya will have a little bit more impact. That's not an Aatrox like last game, though, it's a Poppy. Can only really lock down one member in a, in a wall stun and then maybe a big ult at best. Oh. Again. Oh! Out. They've got a corner as well. Fisher went over. Now Mum flies through. She's upset with the snake as Monkey just needs that reset. TT now the ones with the pick. And remember, Dragon wasn't taken. It's still sitting there. As Herald comes through as well, TT looking for more off the back end of the play and five members from in. They're threatening the dive here with the range available. 
exactly. We should get this and then the dragon will be theirs. Real nice catch there and Hoy up showing off the value of this poppy pick. Oh yeah. Into almost every single champion on EVG has some kind of dash, right? Even don't forget the Viego W. You dash forward for when you hit the W, so yeah. Catching out Fisher there just results in this dragon and the tower, so really well played. But EDG, at the very least, they are still proactively looking, they're just missing, crucially. <laughs> Fisher isn't allowed to move. Oh, again, uh, better corruption. Uh, Poppy sends out to keep his verdict. Still not dead. Hoya has absorbed a lot of damage, but eventually will be burnt down. But what does this mean? His nature's grasp is there, and 1xN is firing oh. away. Look at the claws from UCAL. Range again in favor of TT as UCAL has just been on point this series. Picking up yet another kill to make himself 3-0. Exactly, 301. Looks like he's going death cap second, by the way. He so is. just a more up. damage coming out from Yukal. And there he is, the completion to a Fiendish Codex. So a little bit more haste. Spending out those abilities, just a touch more. He is online and ready to party, as I imagine as well. One xn has got to be approaching that Shoujin. Pretty soon, as a great flash comes out from the snake, which allows the uh, pick here on Tohoya to continue. Good kick though for Beituan at the response, and then the Yukao flash for finds both of the bottom laners here as Fisher can't quite key lock down, but damage already done. It does, however, leave Yukao flashless, right? Uh, it's gonna make taking a Baron pretty difficult as Vampire with this flash should very easily be able to set up Fisher and Monkey to then follow up, so despite the kills feeling quite good in the moment, they're gonna have to take a step back. Still TT. Just for a, a little while longer, I have to imagine, or position a lot more defensively if they're looking to take any kind of objective. Arla, however, has to be said, a style back into this game. Oh. Oh. Two items. Joshua and Dave. Arla, as you speak, does come near, gets poked out. 1xN, 200 stacks by the way, 25, 26 to go, but we might not see it here as Chocho again in, Mum helps out, it's one for one, but the TT, the other one's grouped up, as you see, Monkey gets out over the wing, Hoya willing to threaten, and EDG, I mean, Jamato, they keep getting poked out, they approach the fight every time, it's either a pick or great poke that's just making them partially irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. No matter what, it feels like TT are able to find some kind of foothold in the fight there and you know funnily enough Jake the only reason why that fight doesn't potentially go even worse for EDG is the fact that Yukao's ultimate hits Vampire and Vampire's the one that gets bursted out so the ult just kind of fizzles True. as opposed to spreading out and getting a bigger slow so EDG kind of get away with potentially more than they should have as TT continue to group around and they're kind of coming to this acknowledgement right 1xN he's about to hit his power spike he's 8 stacks Eight away yep as soon as he gets it, I imagine TT will continue, will start to look rather uh, to get up in the face of EDG far more aggressively and to <laughs> play up. That's not the first time we've seen him do no. that out of uh, from the wall. As here we go. 220. 220. Yeah, right. 223. Right. No. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it does not. One more. He's basing now. I wonder what he's actually going to get because Spirit Shogun, as you said, has already picked up. So we have two yeah, items smaller, them. and that was super recent. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Tudor builds. One of them does include Rapify Can the Third, which uh, looks like it's happening. The Zill definitely kind of indicated that that'll be the case. Yep. Uh, plenty of builds, really. Uh, Smod is very versatile champion. You can even see, you know, uh, builds like Riftmaker come out of this point, just because, like, the stats kind of just feel good in Smolder. And that can still be the case after this third item in his so, TT, more than online, and really it's about this next dragon, I guess, and whether or not EDG feel comfortable enough to contest or force a fight, they're the ones with the majority of their summoner spells up, and in all fairness, actually, TT's being UCAL Splash should be up in fact, you mentioned there, it is that burn, that execute is now available for this you know what's crazy as well, I mean, like, it, it's a very different style of AD carry. I think Smolder's an interesting champ design because 
It's like a spellcaster, right? I'd put him with Ezreal. Do you think that's fair? Like, he's kind of like a spellcaster like Ezreal, where it's about the kit. Your autos aren't going to get you very far unless they're weaved in with the actual kit, you know? Ezreal, Hawkey as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, a bottom that's really what a uh, is. Like you mentioned, he has that cast up. Anyway, Aye. bad joke. Bad, bad joke aside. Yep. GT, they have mid lane priority. Smolder's gonna be able to catch this wave pretty damn high. He'll leave Fisher in a position where he's gonna get to this fight second. And TT are slowly creeping deeper and deeper into the jungle. I don't know if they see the snake, but I think so. He's gonna be able to make a pick on that. Arla's getting Fisher in his bottom side though, so that could be an issue TT have to respond to. The dragon has been dragged very, very far out of it. Now we start on my TT. EG, they've got multiple angles, multiple threats here, but frankly, an engage I think would be ill advised. It really would. I mean, if EDG get engaged on here, it's oh. Chains Corruption fly out. Look at where their solo laners are. As Dragon goes down for TT, the snake might be caught out here. We'll just wait and see. The wave is opposite because you Arla's see that Arla. He's going to have to, isn't he? But how do you against Chocho? W flash, no. Doesn't connect. Javada, did you just laugh? <laughs> I did. I mean, I if, he, if he was going to do that, I think what he was scared of is this a very hilarious well where he flash W's and then follows Arla across the map. I don't even know if the teleport you, is such a big... I don't even big, think he can do that, can I, you? I think, I think it will just stop him. I don't think it's quite like a Kali. Yeah, yeah. I think it would just make him stop at the point where he was. Uh, yeah. Either way, he right. didn't stop the teleport from Arla and Arla does get that top tier too. And it does cost Chocho his finish, so, you know, it sucks, but I feel like Chocho's job is going to be a lot less about, you know, hard engaging onto the backline and a lot more about following up on uh, someone else being CC'd True. or very simply peeling for 1x and a new cow. Because there's so many good engage tools already, so many good pick tools. I think for TT, you know, one thing we noticed about this comp is that there's, there's good frontline, there's good engage. Excuse me, there's a lot of uh, great heavy metal objects sitting between the enemies and UCAL and 1XN. And they're at their damage points. We already talked about the scaling. Here they are sitting in front of Baron. Wards are cleared for the time being. EDG are coming to the party. Again, blind. Vision has been the strongest thing for them here in this series, but it's set up continues to move over. Poya with burst out. Monkey ulties in and instead to buffer. It is ulti for ulti. Just chains across to come through. It's re engaged from oh, Ocho. Features grass the ulti to follow through as well. But the TP in the backside is all going to be about Fisher and his angle. The CT are in a bit of a clump and a spirit rush would take them out. But Arla, as he jumps in, they try and get the nuke in the flag. His match 1XN is okay for now. The Painter Man sends out and so does Mum in the back through. Poya still not dying for the time being. And finally, blood spills on the rip. TT are the ones that find it. And somehow none of them die. Yeah, what? that's the, the crazy thing, right? The fact that none of them die. That's now Baron. It will be the poor cool. Hoya's gonna get his health back and reset. I mean, Monkey has to make a bit of a miracle here. But I think he's gonna think against it. EDG, they have to give this one up, unfortunately. And that's Baron. Unless they go for it in the extended. Because this Baron is a slow takedown. But yeah, Monkey's, in, assaulty, Monkey's not really he's gonna here. He's gonna try and cue it. No, smite secured. Now everything on the line for EDG. Is he executes up and available for one X then. Vampire first on the menu, and he just dies down without getting to suck any blood today. For you, Cal, the follow through is going to be the snake. His sonic wave is taken. Yes, it is. Under turret on the monkey. He flashes away. Bay one doesn't get the follow up, but he does make monkey run for his life. It's the Baron in hand. It picks as well. Gives TT the finishing touch to try and take this series out 2 0. Exactly. It's all there for TT to close this game out, close this series out. 2-0 and that would be a massive bolster of confidence as well moving forward in trying to cross that finish line and maybe just maybe get them an opportunity to make it to that top 10 good buffer from monkey but still puts himself in an awkward position and this ultimate here from chocho very much again sets edg in a spot where it's very awkward but this teleport eventually does come in and you can see Vampire's looking for the angle forever, can't quite find it. Arla then goes in, but Rage One's in a position to kick out Fisher. And then it also hits Arla. 
and it ensures that Yukal, 1xn, they are undisturbed in this team fight and they're able to dish out the damage whilst Hoyer of all people is the one that dives forward and finishes off Fisher. Yeah, with Hoyer again. Bad energy here on this poppy. I will say, as you mentioned in the in the last team fight, Patron's kick, exceptional. Patron who you know, it started out this game with a bit of a, a disadvantage because Monkey was building up his own lead. But Jamada, I think what we can say about this is like that the individuality from Monkey doesn't mean anything. We haven't seen much from this Diego this game. We haven't had those big presets like Patron got in the last game. They're trying to set up again for it now. ADG setting up a pick around this next dragon that will lead to Soul for TT. But look at how strong TT are. I mean, we have a three item play. We have three and a half items on one X and who has an execute. And in these team fights, if EG group up, I think it's dead. I agree. Oh, hardly. I think EDG, that window to team fight has very much come to a near close. It's going to take a lot to find a good Army. fight here. Oh my god, the AOE looking at 1XN. Just watch the smolder. Monkey tries to jump in, but Q, a two, Q again. And a double already goes down. The setup from TT, legendary. Chocho, it cost his life for that, but EDG are again on the run with a numbers disadvantage, thanks to the nice picks. Yep, exactly. Now, TT, they can look to uh, chunk away at this tower, eventually get it once this next wave falls up, and again, kills. Tower objective gold here. They won't be able to break open the base with this Baron, but a 5,000 Baron power play, all in all. Plus the fact that they will secure this soul. All but certainly continues to put them in a position where very soon one or two more fights will conclude the, uh, the game here. Yeah. Replay. It's EDG looking for the pick at the end of the day on Chocho. And once Chocho doesn't die, he just presses R key and goes, wait a second, I'm playing Maokai. Goes in. Double sweet spot here onto the Snake and Vampire. The snake is just absolutely in no man's land. And, you know, again. Oh, Monkey, rather, possessing the Maokai, does what he can. It's quite enough to lock down 1XN, who has both his summoner spells now. Yukal, a little bit more vulnerable without that flash, but again, all those defensive tools that TT have that can also, at the same time, be offensive tools, gonna work miracles as it's a really good thing that Vampire <laughs> did not cancel that base, looking for a pick. Very true. Like again, we just leave some more. It's already a 4k gold lead. Baron's up in two minutes time. Soul on one XN as well is gonna give him a bit of versatility to jump in and out. I mean, this smolder is one away from full items. That's the thing, Jamata, is like, you know, this pick we didn't see at all in the last series, but here for one XN, we knew what TT's game plan was. They chilled out the game and when smolder gets to chill out the game, you get to see how strong this champion is. If you just be patient, wait, stack up. No one's going to go near him right now. I mean, he one-shots the carry of EDG. Exactly. So, so, so powerful. And Yukal does the same. We just haven't quite seen that burst potential for a little while. Oh, oh base one! Just runs on in. Good kick again. There's a Q from 1XN. Guess what? Execute a clock. It rolls through as Monkey is now in the back line trying to do something. I mean, it might just be over here. 33 minutes in for TT. They have made this game look smooth sailing as always. EDG are yeeted back again. That opens up another pick and another execute. Seven kills on one XN. And for TT, this is good stuff. Their road to playoffs, it ain't over as they move to four and seven. Not yet. They shout and they scream. Move up to four and seven like you say. And you know, there's a couple of winnable games in the back end of their schedule. There are a lot of tough ones, though, to say the least. I don't really top, you know, sort of eight-ish, seven teams, but at the end of the day, if you can find some very cheeky ways, like, you know, pulling out a small away and just kind of crossing your fingers, playing defensively against some of those teams and scaling it to the game, 